Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course, some hidden gems to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Welcome to episode 48. I'm your host, Carolyn. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join me today on what is a bit of a milestone for the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast. Yes, it's two years since I nervously published the first episode. Little did I know back then, just three months into the pandemic, the amazing support I would receive from both guests and listeners. With 48 episodes in the bank, and many more planned, it's been a great journey and one I'm looking forward to continuing. With listeners from across the globe, from Brazil to Slovenia, India to Saudi Arabia, and New Zealand to North America, it's very humbling to receive the wonderful feedback that some of you have been generous enough to share. And when I get messages from podcast guests saying they have had new clients approach them after hearing them on the podcast, it really does make my day. It's wonderful to be able to provide inspiration and practical tips to travellers and to help them connect with the guests who so generously share their time to appear on the show. So a huge thanks to each and every one of you. I feel very fortunate to be able to play even a tiny role in making your trip to Switzerland something special. And speaking of fortunate, I'm very fortunate to have visited the beautiful Jungfrau region of Switzerland many times. It keeps calling me back time and time again. And it's a region that offers something for everyone. Of course, there are numerous mountain excursions to enjoy. Jungfrau Jok and the Schilthorn are two well-known mountains that can be visited. But there's also an abundance of other natural attractions that make this part of Switzerland so appealing. With gorges, glaciers, rivers and lakes to be explored, it's no wonder that the Jungfrau region is one of the most visited destinations in Switzerland. But there's another reason that many folks head for this part of the country, and that is for the huge variety of outdoor sports on offer. Interlaken, the region's main town, is known as the adventure capital of Europe, and it attracts adrenaline junkies who come for the chance to try paragliding, skydiving, bungee jumping, and many other outdoor activities. In today's episode, I'm joined by Hannah Robley from Outdoor, an Interlaken-based company that offers a vast selection of outdoor activities in the stunning natural environment. If you need a natural trophy, you need Switzerland. Before we hear from Hannah, I'd like to give a shout out to Switzerland Tourism, the sponsors of the podcast. Their website, myswitzerland.com, is packed full of ideas and inspiration to help you plan your Swiss vacation. So make sure you check it out. Now, let's hear about some of the many outdoor activities available in Interlaken. Hi, Hannah. Welcome to the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Now, I'd love to know how an American ended up in Switzerland working for an outdoor adventure company. So can you (laughs) share a bit about yourself and and tell us how your story has evolved uh, for you to end up in Switzerland? Yeah, I'd be happy to. It's it's a good one, I think. Um, I'm originally from Florida, born and raised in Central Florida. Um, some friends of mine and I were planning a trip to Italy back in 2015. To I was actually officiating a wedding for some good friends of mine, looking for a few things to do in the area. Um, just during my travels, they recommended that I come canyoning in Switzerland, that I had to come to Interlaken. So I came to Interlaken. Um, I found a company called Outdoor Interlaken, signed up for a canyoning tour, and a year later, I married my canyoning guide. (laughs) (laughs) 
uh, yeah, just I, I came through, started as a tourist, just as a traveler, and then it just changed everything. They say that it's the best day ever, and for me, it really was. It's it was a game changer. Wow, fantastic! That's a great story. Uh, now you mentioned obviously your friends knew that Interlaken was famous for canyoning, and it's often referred to as the adventure capital of Europe. So I guess it makes sense that there's a company like Outdoor based in Interlaken. How would you sum up what Outdoor offers to its customers? Yeah, in summation, we offer just unique kind of once in a lifetime outdoor adventure experiences from water-based activities, jump activities, um, soft adventure, high adrenaline, thrill activities, um, mountaineering, basically anything you can do in the area that involves nature, um, we're, we're kind of involved in it. Fantastic. Now, I've been lucky enough to stay in uh, Lauterbrunnen many, many times, and you can't stay in Lauterbrunnen without seeing paragliders um, coming, you know, off a mountain and and landing down in the valley. So I'd like to ask you about some of the activities that outdoor offers and paragliding is the, the perfect one to start with. Yeah, it's the same in Interlaken. You know, you walk through town, you look in the sky and you just see people flying. You hear a little bit of woo and wee and, and, and it never gets old. You know, people who've been here for years, like you just, it's, I don't know, it's, it's such a a nice part of the local experience to see people kind of in the air doing something that, you know, is just really exciting and unique for them. We're partnered with a company here at Interlaken to offer paragliding. Uh, It's a great a local adventure tour because it only takes an hour and a half from beginning to end. Guests get picked up in Interlaken, driven to Beattenberg, um, where they start their flight, uh, spend anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes in the air, depending on conditions, and then land right in the center of town where they become quite the spectacle. You know, there's this big green field in the middle of Interlaken called the Hermatha. And people gather there to take photos. This is where the paragliders and hang gliders land. People take walks, do shopping. Um, it's it's quite a little hub of of interest and activity in town. So you're on grand display. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic to see all those different the different colorful parachutes too coming coming into mm-hmm. land. It's it's a great as you said it's a great spectacle. It is. It sells itself. People just point to the sky and they're like I need to do that. How do I do that? And you're like, "Okay, I can I can help you with that." <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So aside from paragliding, what are some of the other air activities that that you offer? Uh, we're also partnered with a skydiving company. Um, they do jumps out of airplanes and helicopters uh, with a, a hang gliding company. It's you know similar to paragliding, but also quite a different uh, experience, different body position. Um, there are some scenic flights offered by a local company. And then for us, I guess, uh, things that we provide directly, our jump activities would be considered air, you know, mm-hmm. free, the free fall nature of activities we have a Kenyan swing and a bungee jump, which I think are two of the most high thrill, like scare yourself and pay for it kind of activities you can do around here. Um, but two really, really spectacular um, jump activities that that we ourselves operate. Yeah, great. So can you can you tell us a bit more about those for people who are interested or, or haven't heard of the, the Kenyan canyon swing and and the bungee jumping yeah what are they what can they expect if they sign up for one of those activities absolutely so for the activities that we operate everything kind of starts at our base in Interlaken, and then we provide the transportation out to the location so for example the the canyon swing is located in grindelwald in the glacier canyon Uh, so we we drive the guests to the jump location Uh, we kind of get them geared up in a special harness, uh, drive them up to the top. The platform is 90 meters above the, the Lucina River. So imagine you're you're standing up uh, above the water in this narrow gorge. There's a, a bit of a metal platform. Guests get clipped in behind a safety line. They're brought out to the platform and then they then themselves have to just jump. Like they have to, to just willingly launch their body (laughs) off of this platform to free fall for several seconds towards a raging whitewater river. Uh, And then they begin a pendulum swing at 120 kilometers an hour between like narrow gorge walls, like super intense. um, But really the intensity is just those, those few seconds of, 
oh my goodness, I have to jump. And then there's this just gut turning free fall. And then the minute the rope catches you, you're just, you know, high on life. You're swinging. It's, it's thrilling. Um, really, really cool activity. Then you're, you're brought over to a platform. All of this is, you know, on video, if you choose to keep the memories for a lifetime. Um, the bungee. So like with the swing, you have this nice pendulum motion, you know, you're kind of sitting upright as you swing over the river bungee. I think most people are pretty familiar with that. This is like the head down rebound, um, activity. So our bungee activity is probably one of the most scenic bungee locations in the world. We take you to, um, Erlenbach. We go up a gondola to towards the Stockhorn peak. Um, the actual jump itself takes place um, in a, a small mountain gondola. So you're literally in this, this tiny red gondola suspended over a lake, just absolutely breathtaking scenery, a lake and mountains. It's, it's an evening trip. So the sun is setting. It's gorgeous. And same thing. You have to put your hands on the side of the wall and launch yourself out just as confidently as you can. <laughs> um, mega free fall, um, you rebound, and then you're, you're winched back up into the, the gondola at the end. So just heart pumping, stomach turning, but absolutely like the best, the best adrenaline rush you can, can get. Yeah, I can imagine. And I guess there's no time for photos when you're uh, plunging from the gondola <laughs> down above the lake either. Actually, that what's crazy is that that bungee trip is one of our most well-documented activities. You know, you have, I think, three cameras on you at all times. We have a photographer slash videographer who is literally hanging in a harness outside of the bungee of the gondola. Um, you have a wrist GoPro that we provide. So, and there's a, a camera in the doorway. So you get a very, like really, really nicely edited custom video or photos of your jump from multiple perspectives. You know, you see the actual jump, you see footage from the rebound time, all of it. So it's really, really nice. Wow. Yeah. So that you can re replay that moment over and over again for as long as yeah. you want. And that one's when you have to, you know, if you're going to go do something like that, you know, you want to show it off. You want to prove it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's rare to see someone come on the bungee and not take away some sort of photo or video proof that they, they did it. And it's just so beautiful there that, you know, you really want to remember the, the scenery. It's hard to take in when you're nervous. So it's good to have a reminder once you calm down a bit. Yeah, I could imagine. Um, now I'm sure that adventure seekers who um, want to enjoy an activity on a lake or on, on one of the rivers um, can do so through outdoor uh, activities as well. So what sort of um, water-based activities can they choose from? Yeah, these are some of our most popular. So um, whitewater rafting, uh, canyoning, our jet boat. Um, these are some of our, our most popular water activities. We also partner with a kayaking company. Um, but yeah, the, the water is kind of our, our bread and butter. So um, I can go into a bit more detail about some of those. Um, canyoning, especially, you know, even for me, you know, I, I'm here because of canyoning. You know, that's what brought me here. Um, that's what kept me here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but even going into it, I honestly had no idea what I was getting into. My friends described it to me. And it was like, even after they had done it, it's like they didn't know what they had done. So it, it was it's such a foreign concept, maybe just to Americans. We don't really have that, you know, in the States. But um, so with canyoning, you're making your way through a canyon in the water by way of swimming, walking, rappelling, jumping and sliding. We outfit you with all of the equipment that you need, which is like a neoprene wetsuit, a jacket, harness, a life vest and a helmet. So you're kind of just this bundle of rubber and insulation, you know, you, you bounce when you're wearing all of this stuff, um, special shoes for the water with, with good grip for walking on the rocks, but, you know, using the special equipment, you, you make your way through, through the Canyon, navigating obstacles, you know, sometimes you're climbing over rocks, you're repelling down granite walls, you're jumping off of rocks over waterfalls into these, um, beautiful pools of water. Uh, I was hooked instantly. It's such a unique thing to do it's um you know just in this environment where you kind of get this feeling of like i'm not supposed to be here but somehow i'm i'm lucky enough to be in this special place doing something absolutely unthinkable um so canyoning 
is is really popular. Um, and I think a lot of people do come into it not exactly sure what they're getting mm-hmm. into, but they leave thinking that it was just the best thing they've ever done, myself included. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think rafting's a little more well known, you know, where rafting kind of takes place um, on a broader scale globally. So with our um our rafting tours. Um, well, I should mention like for our canyoning tours, we have three different tours. So that's maybe an important detail to include. Um, we have basically your, your easy, your medium and your difficult. So okay, all of our canyons, they, they vary in duration, difficulty and price basically. So our local canyon uh, and canyoning Interlaken, it's about a three hour tour door to door. You're in the canyon for about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, And this is a good introduction to canyoning. You know, none of the elements are very demanding. None of the jumps are very high. There's nothing that you have to do that's it's very big in this canyon. So it's a great canyon for um, people as young as 12. We take into this canyon, so you don't have to have any prior experience. Don't even have to be a strong swimmer. Um, This is really just a good a good taster. But it's also a great adventure for anyone. We have groups of adults and bachelor parties who come and join us in the local canyon. It's a good fit for everybody. Um, Even if you're just short on time and you want to combine a bunch of activities into one day, you can manage to go canyoning and paragliding and canyon swinging. You know, with these short tours, you can really maximize um, a big day. Um, Our other two tours, Canyon and Grimsel, which was my canyon. I claim (laughs) stake to that canyon. (laughs) Canyon and Grimsel and Canyon and Klishlira. These are our longer tours. They're about 45 minutes to an hour away from Interlaken. So a little more transportation involved to get to these locations. And then the tours are a little bit longer. And in the case of Klish Lira, quite a big step up as far as difficulty. You know, this is a very athletic canyon. You have to be um, good physical shape, strong swimmer. But when you're fit and keen for it, you get big jumps, fast slides, and just really nonstop action for three to four hours in the water. It's one of my favorite things to do on a day off. I love cliche Lyra, never gets old. Um, so it's cool that we have this kind of range where, you know, we have a bit of a canning experience for everybody, you know, as long as you're, you're old enough and meet a few other requirements. Um, but yeah, you know, it's the kind of thing, it sounds quite extreme, but almost anyone can, can yeah. get a taste for it if they're, if they're happy with that. Yeah, that's that's um, good to know that that you you've got those options for them. So for someone who's a, a raw novice, there's um, they can do the the Interlaken Canyon, and then there's mm-hmm. other options for the more experienced. Yeah, exactly, and and same with our rivers, you know. So for our our rivers, starting at the most basic, we've got a family rafting trip where uh, we're really just encouraging like fun and safety on the water for families with kids, kids as young as eight years old. Um, it takes place on the lower part of the Lucina River. So it's a little bouncy, some some gentle rapids, but nothing hectic. Kids get to just kind of get that initial rafting experience with the equipment and just to see see what it's like. Gives families a great option when they're traveling in an adventure town with children and wondering, what can I do? Um, the rafting Sima trip, is kind of the next step up from that. We take kids as young as 10 on this. Uh, the class two to three river, so a um, bit more action than the family rafting. You're talking about some, some real rapids in a very beautiful river in the Simmental, um, but it's it's not um, the super high action pumping whitewater um, mm-hmm. alpine river experience. So it's still good for families. It's good for non-swimmers. You know, if somebody wants to have a whitewater rafting experience, but they're not uh, a confident swimmer, rafting Sima is a great option. And then all the way on the other end, rafting Lucina. This is our class three to four river, high action, continuous rapids, really exciting. Um, it's for guests 14 years and older who are good swimmers looking for just that like adrenaline rush uh, mm-hmm. on on the river. Uh, it starts in Luchenthal. We raft down the river. It ends up in the Lake of Briens, just close to, to our base. Um, guests then can get out and swim, uh, enjoy the the final part of the tour, and then get picked back up and, and go to the base. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so I'm assuming that um, because Interlaken is surrounded by the beautiful Bernese Alps, you've probably got a few mountain-based uh, activities that people can join in as well. Can you tell us about some of those? Yeah, I think I... 
personal favorite and one of the most unique would be the, the Via Ferrata. It's called Klettersteig in German. Um, the Via Ferrata was actually, I believe, a, a mode of um, kind of transportation that was uh, designed during World War I in the Italian Alps as a way of getting soldiers through the mountains. But um, the Via Ferrata just means it's a, it's a continuous steel cable that's run throughout the mountains for, you know, easy, easy traversing. So for the, for the Via Ferrata that we have in Murin, it goes from Murin to Gimmelwald. Um, guests are provided with a harness. They need to be wearing good, solid hiking shoes, a helmet. Um, they're accompanied by a mountain guide and they're led on this, you know, about a three hour, let's say hike um, along, you know, it, it's, it's like a hike and climbing combined together. It's, it's a really hard thing to explain. You really should look up photos of this one via Ferrata Marin, look up the photos. You won't believe that, that like inexperienced people can do this. Um, it's not technically a hard activity, but it's, it's very exposed. You know, there are parts yeah. of this hike slash climb where you're literally on a rock face, just standing above the valley floor, just right against the wall. You know, you step on these steel or metal rungs as you as you cross along. Um, the way the carabiner system is designed is that you're you're continuously attached to this cable as you make your way along. So it's it's a very safe activity. And again, it's it's led by a mountain guide. So you're under very good supervision, which is is why you're able to kind of experience something so unusual and so big <laughs> in a really safe way, but um, it's a good one. If you have a, a strong head for heights, it's, if you're not, not comfortable with heights, this is not the activity for you, but I mean, it's really, it's just directly in the mountains on the mountain, you know, with um, unbelievable views and experience. And, you know, one of the coolest parts about just climbing or hiking is you're just getting to these extraordinary places. And, and the fact that the Via Ferrata allows you to do it with such ease, like such easy access to an extraordinary place is really special. So the Via Ferrata for mountain activities is, is a good one. Um, our mountaineering team, they do all, all sorts of things in the mountains. Um, courses on climbing, hiking, their glacier hikes, um, in the winter, you know, everything heads to the mountains, skiing, mm -hmm. ski touring, snowshoeing, sledding. Um, we have some activities that are based in Interlaken, like snowshoeing tours and sledding tours. And then on the mountaineering side of our team, you know, they do some bigger stuff <laughs> high up in the mountains um, with some big um, yeah, alpine ski tours, you know, taster courses for those who want to try it out, basic skills courses for those who want to get a little bit better at that's something that they're um get interested in so yeah a lot to do in the mountains <laughs> yeah absolutely so uh, aside from uh, skiing and, and some of those uh snowshoeing and so on that would only be available in the winter uh most of the other activities that you've mentioned available year round or are they seasonal as well that's a good question yeah so some of the air activities are year round like skydiving and paragliding um canyoning and rafting are are seasonal to the summer mm -hmm. and then yeah the, exactly the snowshoeing sledding that's um specific to the winter the winter yeah okay great now most of the activities that we've talked about um are suitable for adults you, you mentioned a couple of the water activities there that are suitable for children but what about um are there some other activities that might be ideal for families who are in the region? Yeah, so like I mentioned, the, the family rafting and the SIMA are great activities for, um, for kids. The jet boat activity, this is a great one for families with children. Um, another one of our water activities, it takes place on Lake Brian's beautiful lake, emerald, you know, turquoise, just unbelievable, you know, unbelievably beautiful shade of water. Um, the jet boat, it's like, I kind of describe it as like a jet ski for 11 people. <laughs> uh, it's a speed boat that sets up to 11 people. Uh, it does a, a very a scenic and informative tour of Lake Brian's, but then it also does these awesome 360 spins. So there's, there's an adrenaline factor there that's like just the right amount for people who, who aren't into some of the more extreme activities or who have elderly guests or young guests, you know, kids as young as five. Um, so the jet boat's a perfect activity for kids. 
um, our local ropes park. This is going to be one of the most popular activities for families with children, um, the ropes park in Interlaken. We've got uh, parkours specifically designed for children, including three new ones this year that we've built specifically for kids. Um, but it's it's great for adults as well. I mean, in the park, you've got a full range from like very easy, gentle, low to the ground and simple to courses that strong men have a hard time completing <laughs> sometimes, you know, really balancey or they require some strength or some coordination. Um, so all kinds, uh, ev- everyone enjoys the Sal Park, but kids especially, it's such a great option. The safety mechanism, um, the system is designed so that once you're attached, you cannot come off. Um, it gives parents a lot of peace of mind, mm. puts them at ease that they can send their kids off into the park to enjoy without worry, without stress. Um, you know, we've got a team in the park there to help and assist and explain things. Everybody gets a thorough safety briefing at the beginning. So they know how to use the equipment and what to do. Um, but yeah, it's just a great way to say, okay, kids go have fun. I'm going to, you know, do my own thing or hang out or watch or, or whatever. And the kids love it. Yeah. Um, but you, you'd be, you'd be surprised at what kids can actually do around here. I mean, the canyoning interlock in minimum age is 12, um, paragliding is six hang gliding is wow. eight. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. Kids can, can get into quite a bit of fun, uh, in interlocking. So not, not everything, um, yeah, it's, it's only for adults. There's a lot for kids. We've also got the, the glacier Canyon in Grindelwald where the swing takes place this is a great attraction. I mean, now we're talking kids in strollers, you know, or, um, wheelchairs, dogs, the, the glacier canyons is really cool attraction where guests can make their way about a kilometer through the Canyon where the glacier used to exist. They can learn a bit about the history of the region, um, the formation, and then, um, disappearance sadly of the glacier in that area area and um yeah that's another great one for kids and families yeah okay um now a lot of the activities that you've talked about are probably referred to as extreme sports um so what safety measures are in place now you you mentioned there obviously just about the rope park that um you can't you can't come off the rope so that makes (laughs) parents feel safe but what about for some of those other activities um like paragliding and and canyoning and so forth what safety measures are in place to ensure that the customers have a great experience but aren't in any uh, in any danger Yeah, it's a great question. And it's, you know, the thing you kind of have to talk about, because obviously we're here to have a good time. We're here to do unique, exciting, high thrill activities, but ultimately safety has to come first. Um, So with, um, I would say like the certification, the experience of the guide team, uh, the standard of our equipment and our kind of careful and continuous monitoring of conditions are three of the biggest ways that we commit to like a safety first approach to adventure sports. Um, but there's a lot more than that. Um, those are probably the three biggest things, but um, the cool thing in Interlaken is that there's a lot of experience in, in Interlaken and in the teams, you know, we, we have professional experience, qualified guides who are, you know, some of the, the best in the world, some of the most experienced in the world at what we're doing. So um, there are so many different parts of the daily uh, flow, the daily overview where we're looking at, at what we're doing, like what is the, not just what the weather is like. That's a very, that's a very basic, simple way to look at it. They go so much further than that. They go, you know, what has the weather been like? What's coming up? What's the trend? Um, we take it really, really seriously because, um, you know, it really is, we, we have to run safe trips to run, you know, to have uh, a good time to give customers the experience they want. Um, it's always disappointing when you have to, to make a cancellation, but, you know, I like to assure guests, if I'm calling them with bad news that their trip isn't running, I want them to know it's because like we have considered their safety above everything else. You know, like we, we want to run tours. We want to run our trips. We're experts at doing it. But we're also, you know, really, really committed to making sure that we're only doing this under conditions that are appropriate. You know, you can't take for granted what we're doing out there. We're dealing with Mother Nature. She doesn't just like pause for us because Mm -hmm. we're, you know, we have a plan that day. (laughs) Uh, That's not how it works. So it's really up to us to be vigilant and um, careful and considerate. And our team's got a lot of experience doing that. Uh, We've, like I said, really high standards for. for the 
the, the guide team for the equipment and for how we just really think daily, not just once, you know, not just, you know, in the morning, but before the trip, before the, you know, at the, at the location of the canyon under the river, um, continuous, you know, checks and decisions being made to make sure we're making the right, the right call. Fantastic. So if one of our listeners uh, is thinking of taking part in one of your activities, but they're still a little bit nervous, um, what advice would you give them? That's normal. I feel like that's kind of part of it. You know, I mean, if you were just really comfortable jumping out of an airplane, like, I mean, yeah, I guess people do it. But I think that 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 buildup of um, excitement and a bit of nervousness is kind of what draws you to do these things. You want to you want to push yourself, you know, so it's absolutely normal. I try to get people to hold on to a little bit of that, <laughs> that excited nervousness um, to an extent. You know, there's always a line there. You have to decide when someone is so scared that it's not the right thing for them and maybe find an alternative that's a little less intense. I mean, obviously, we're always reminding guests of the measures we take, you know, the experience we have, what measures we're taking to keep them safe, how the equipment works. I mean, every activity involves not just like one, but sometimes two safety briefings, demonstrations. You know, we're not just going in and just saying good luck. You know, these yeah. are guided <laughs> these are guided tours with experts who are there designed to like keep you safe, but also keep you motivated, explain to you exactly how to jump, exactly where to jump, exactly what to do um, with the rafting, you know, the paddle talks and the safety briefings, there's, they're very um, demonstrative. You know, we are showing you here is what you do. And I find, especially with rafting, those safety talks are so encouraging. And like, even for me, I, I get a little bit of, of nerves going into like a rafting trip. But by the time I've, I've sat with the guides and they've explained, okay, this is how this works. These are the commands. This is what you're going to do in this situation. I always feel so much more at ease. Like they're so thorough. These guys clearly know what they're doing for our team. I think it's really important. Like when I talk to the sales team and the customer service team about not just selling activities, but really giving customers um, detailed, good advice about what trip is right for them or what trip is not right for them. We speak from experience. I'm really big on, you know, we've done these activities. We've gone on these activities. We've experienced them from beginning to end. Sometimes guests just need to know the details and need to know, like, mm -hmm. what am I going to do with my phone? Or, you know, they get, they get caught up in the little things like what type of shoes do I wear? I mean, yeah. when you're going into something that's so foreign in nature, you just, you, I think the more knowledge we can give them about how it works and just answer every little question they can have. I think it really helps people kind of calm down, understand that like, okay, these guys really know what they're doing. They're here to help me have a good time doing this. And they're going to get me through, um, so providing a lot of detail, answering every question, no matter how big or small, I think that's an important part of it. It usually cuts down the nerves um, yeah. or, you know, just knowing the full product range of, of what, what you can offer from easy, soft adventure to like full extreme and, and getting a feel for like what the guest wants out of their experience. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing, you know, not pushing people on to just whatever I want to sell that day, but like, what are you here to do? And like, mm -hmm. How can we make that happen for you? Yeah, great. So I'm curious to know if um, there's a nationality that uh, you find is the most adventurous. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's quite. Yeah, well, okay. If I'm going to say which nationality is the most adventurous, and I'm not just saying this because I'm American, but I feel like, yeah, our, our tourists from the from the states are maybe the ones we see like the the most on on some of our our bigger trips. But to be honest, I think that's one of my favorite things about working in this industry is that it's so international. Our guests are coming from everywhere, you know, nationalities you wouldn't, you know, I don't know, think of necessarily. I mean, you name it, you could name a nationality. Um, and I've, I've seen guests come through ready to book something. Um, you know, we had, we have, um, a lot of guests from these states. Uh, obviously, we do have a the Swiss market is really important to us, so we're trying to get our our local friends on board and coming and experiencing Interlaken. But South Korea is a big market for us. Pre COVID, China was a big market for us. All winter long, we still saw travelers from Singapore coming, um, but um, a lot of Arab guests, Indian guests, um, Brazil. I could just name the world. Probably, <laughs> I could just keep going. Uh, and there's there's someone that we've we've seen come through. So. 
I think that's what's what's cool. I think it was um, maybe a f- couple of summers ago. I just remember a lot of women from Saudi Arabia jumping on the canyon swing and like they were loving it. You know, I mean, these these women felt so excited and so empowered. They were like doing this high adventure activity. And that just really stood out as such a, such a cool thing because they, for them, they're like, yes, like, you know, where I'm from for women to do this activity is like quite special. Mm -hmm. And, and that resonated, but we see that all the time, you know, it's just people from all over the world, pushing themselves out of their comfort zones, doing something extraordinary. And um, yeah, it's a special experience for every individual regardless of where they're from. Absolutely. So what would be the most popular activity that you sell? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I would say top three, probably our ropes park and canyoning and rafting are our, I think, probably the biggest. Okay, so a bit of variety there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are there any, uh, I mean, you just mentioned one m- moment that really sticks out with you with the, the ladies in the canyon swing, but are there any other sort of really special moments um, that you've experienced on one of the trips? You know, we get some requests for marriage proposals, and it's always a very sweet thing to see come through the email. You know, someone's booked a trip and then they leave us a note or they send a separate email and like, hey, I'm going to propose to my partner. Um, we've had it, you know, a guest proposed to his partner um, at the frozen waterfall on the night sledding tour. Pretty magical. Um, or we had a bungee guest who his his girlfriend jumped, and when she came back up, everyone was holding a rose, and he had a ring ready for oh. her, like <laughs> in the bungee. Um, another one. This was last year. This guy was so nervous, he almost got lost and didn't make it to the canyon. In fact, I was WhatsApping him on my phone, like video chatting him, like trying to help him find the meeting point, like, calm down, dude, you're okay, it's fine, you're going to make it. But in our Grimsel Canyon, um, there's a 50 meter rappel down a granite wall at the very beginning of the canyon, huge element, everyone's pretty wide eyed at this rappel. And he proposed to his girlfriend at the bottom of the rappel, they got down just full of energy and adrenaline and he he asked her to marry him so those are always pretty special I think the skydive team also gets a lot of marriage proposal marriage proposals it's it's quite cool that people are already you know they're just trying to like take one of the the biggest things they're ever going to do and just up it somehow yeah. you know <laughs> so it's, it's quite cool you thought we were just going bungee jumping but actually we're, yeah we're gonna, <laughs> yes. I'm going to propose as well yeah oh Amazing. Now, I think I might know the answer to this next question, but you might surprise me. What is your <laughs> favorite outdoor activity? Oh, for sure. You know, it canyoning hands down for me. I absolutely love the sport. Um, you know, something I've tried to get into just on an individual kind of recreational level outside of work. But honestly, I'll come to work on a day off and just hop on a trip, um, go into one of the canyons. I think it's it's just so unique and so fun. I always, I just feel, I feel amazing in the Canyon. And afterwards, I just feel really lucky that it's something that I have um, such, you know, easy access to. I think that's what's so cool here in Interlochen is that we have just um, a crazy amount of access to things that for so many are truly like once in a lifetime, like to get there and to do this is, is out of the way on, you know, um, but for us to just be like, yeah, it's a Tuesday. I'm going canyoning. Um, <laughs> something I never want to take for granted. You know, it's yeah. always special to me that that I'm able to do that. Yeah. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Hannah, for um, sharing all that with us. Where can our listeners find out more information about Outdoor? Yeah, you can find us um, on our website at outdoor.ch. Um, We're also on Instagram under Outdoor Interlochen or our Facebook page is also outdoor.ch. Awesome. Well, I'm sure lots of listeners will be heading over to those uh, pages to find out more information and book one of those amazing trips that um, you've chatted about today. I hope so. Tell them to come say hi. I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. I think it's pretty obvious that Hannah not only fell in love with canyoning, and her husband when she visited Interlaken for the first time, she also fell in love with the concept of offering clients a unique outdoor experience. She is clearly passionate about matching clients with the perfect active adventure trip and helping them to create memories that will last a lifetime. 
So which of these adventure activities from outdoor.ch are you going to try? If you do book one of the outdoor trips, make sure you let me know by sending an email to hello at holidays to switzerland.com or tagging Holidays to Switzerland on social media. I'd love to see which activity you choose. I'll include links to where you can find out more about outdoor.ch in the show notes for this episode. You'll also find links to numerous handy articles on the Jungfrau region, including accommodation guides, information about regional transport passes, and much more. The show notes are available at holidays to switzerland.com forward slash episode 48. Thanks for your company today. Until next time, tschüss. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website, holidays to switzerland.com, sign up for our monthly newsletter, or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travelers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidays to switzerland.com slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.